Morning everyone, welcome back to the shed on what looks like being a cooler day than yesterday. It was warm in here, um, but managed to get everything done. Um, thanks very much for watching the previous video. By now, hopefully you'll have seen the one that I created on natural metal finishes. I thought I'd do something slightly different this morning and round up some of the questions that were asked about that video. The, I posted it online, posted it on forums and that kind of thing, also on Facebook pages that I frequent, and um, some questions came back that I thought I could answer on this video rather than writing everything out. It's a bit of shorthand, I guess. So. I'll go through those. Um, now, the first question that arose was um, from a guy called Brad on Hyperscale who asked about um, the PSI from the compressor and also whether or not I use gloss coats. That question came up quite a lot yesterday. How do I seal this finish and what do I do to, perfect, to prepare the finish for decals and um, I guess final weathering and all of that sort of stuff. Simple answer to that is, in terms of preparation for decals, is if I can avoid putting um, a varnish on top of this metal finish, I will, at all costs. Um, the reason for that is that this finish is quite delicate in terms of appearance, and if you put a varnish on top of it, it will kill it. It doesn't really matter whether it's the the paint that I've used here, which is the Tamir Aerosol, or whether or not it's from um, another manufacturer such as Vallejo or AK or Alclad, or that, whatever metallic finish you put on a model, if you put varnish over the top of it, it will kill the finish. Um, so if I can avoid that, I try to. Now, that throws up the question as to whether or not the decals will adhere properly to this finish. It is smooth. As it, as it stands. This this surface here is really, really smooth. So the decals will go onto this no problem at all. The reason why you put gloss coats onto a, onto a model prior to putting decals onto it is to get rid of that dreadful silvering effect that you get um, if you put a decal over the top of a matte finish. Because it's matte paint has by its very nature got a rough finish, it traps air underneath the decal and that causes this odd refraction of light between the surface of the decal and the surface of the model and it, it's called silvering and it, it, it sort of looks like what it is, it's like a silver kind of finish. Now the first thing is this is smooth enough to take the decals anyway but also because it's a silver finish if there is any air trap between the decal and the surface of the model that silvering won't really show up anyway because it's a silver on a silver so you're probably going to be alright. Now. If you don't feel confident in doing that, then by all means, coat the, the model in, a, in a, a layer of, of gloss. On here I've got a number of products that can be used. Um, we have Alclad's um, finish. These are um, clear, clear coat gloss, aqua gloss, which a lot of people use. This is um, um, a clear coat. This is a semi-matte, so this would be a final finish. I've also got my favourite gloss which is um, X22 Clear from Tamir. I use this a lot, I thin it with levelling thinners, um, spray it around about 30-40% paint to 60-70% thinners, spray it in a bunch of um, thin coats. I really love this. The only slight downside to this is it can take a while to dry, certainly if it's humid like it is at the moment it, it takes a little bit longer to dry, but I really like it, it's, it's crystal clear, looks great on the model. Um, also um, Johnson's Clear, um, over the years this has been a preferred choice for a lot of model makers, it's almost gained mythical status now to be honest, um, way beyond in my opinion, way beyond its, uh, it, it, its real it's real use. I don't know. It's you end up spraying so many layers of this to get a decent gloss coat. I, I just wonder whether or not it's 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 worth all of the aggravation. But I got a couple of bottles of this. Um, not telling you where I live because this stuff's worth an absolute fortune these days. So you can use Johnson's Clear as well. Um, and added on to that question about um, 
about sealing the finished prior to decals, I guess it's sealing the decals once they're on and once they're dry. Um, again, you can use any one of these um, uh, one of these finishes to do that should you choose to do so. If you're going to weather a model down, you probably don't want the finish to be really bright and vibrant anyway. So by putting on one of these coats, it will knock back um, the patina on the surface of the model. So you're probably going to get a reasonably um, realistic finish um, along that way anyway. Um, if you look at natural metal aircraft that have been out in the field for a while, they take on this kind of like almost like a pale grey colour rather than a bright silver finish. So you might find that that's to your advantage. Um, following on from that, Ian Smythe got in touch with me on Facebook and asked me about clear colours. I think what he specifically meant were, were these clear colours. Th these ones are from Gonsanio, clear blue, clear red. Uh, these two here are clear yellow and clear green from Tamir. Exactly the same paint really, um, give or take. Uh, the answer to that is simply yes, you can use that to tint panels. It, uh, you can use this to mix in with the paint as well. It will give you a nice a nice kind of warm colour um, if you chuck this stuff into the um, into the, the finish. But you can also thin this down, mask off panels and, and spray over the top of it. Um, you probably wouldn't be using um, red, green, yellow and blue on a military aircraft. but. It might have some uses on the back end of an aircraft such as an F-100 where you've got um, um, the appearance of burnt metal. I think that's certainly where this would this would work, work perfectly over that in exactly the same way as it would work perfectly over a chromed exhaust pipes on a motorbike, that kind of thing. So you can use this, uh, thin it once again with, uh, with lacquer thinner. I prefer to use lacquer thin because it's, it's it's quicker drying, but I think you can probably thin this with it with um, X20A as well, which is um, to me as standard acrylic thinners. That would be fine. You'd be okay with that. Um, other questions that came in. Um, one of them came from Tom Cleaver. Um, kind of rightly so, I think. Um, he asked, why didn't I use? another paint such as Vallejo rather than decanting paint and, uh, and going through the rigmarole that I did um, uh, on Wednesday when I created this video. The simple answer to that is um, all of these models are made to really tight deadlines and I just don't have the time to experiment with anything new. The model is always king in any article that I create. The finishing products aren't. Unless I'm specifically creating um, a feature based around a new product and the model is used as the vehicle on which I use those products then this is always king. So what I finish this with is sort of irrelevant in many respects because what I want to try and do is get this onto the page and show readers what the kit looks like not the finishing product. And although I use a lot of different products from a lot of different manufacturers and I think they're all cool and I think they're great for the models to have that, um, to have that choice, this, the plastic kit, this is the most important thing. Um, so that's the reason I would you know, love to try these, these products out and, and may try them on, on smaller items around a kit. Um, but if I'm working to a deadline and I'm trying something new and it goes belly up, halfway through the project, I'm going to be fighting time and, and and having found a system that works to create natural metal finishes, I'm going to stick with it for now. Unless I get the time to create some models away from work and, and, and build some, some, some new kits that allow me to experiment, I'm going to kind of stick with what I know. It, it's just, it's just the, I've had too many models go horribly wrong. <laughs> two days before the, the the model's due to be photographed and I end up having to fill space that I really didn't need to do. Um, uh, I'd like to um, also mention about orange peel. Somebody um, asked this question on Hubscale yesterday. Uh, sorry, I didn't get your name from, from, the, um, from the forum. Asking about orange peel. This system doesn't create orange peel. Um, it, it doesn't work in the same way as a gloss paint. It works more in, in the same way as a matte paint, almost. Uh, and it's so thin when it goes on and the layers flash off so quickly um, that you don't have to worry about that. I think what was seen in the pictures was um, essentially uh, um, the reflection of the, of the 
of the particles, the metal particles under the lights. Um, there certainly isn't any orange peel on this. The, these are really smooth today. Um, and actually, having dried out overnight, it, they've tightened up even more. So they look better today than they than they looked yesterday um, or Wednesday when I when I actually created the video. Um, so uh, finally, um, PSI in the compressor. Um, this is a question that gets asked a lot um, um, by modelers, two modelers who are, who are um, airbrushing a lot. I don't really regulate the PSI um, in, in the compressor. I, I use 25 PSI most of the time um, and that stays kind of consistent. The thinning of the paint usually is 50% um, paint to 50% thinners. Sometimes I push that a little bit more so it's 40% paint to 60% thinners depending on the job that I'm doing but I always stick with 25 PSI. A number of reasons for that. One is I can regulate the, the pressure underneath with the valve underneath the airbrush if I need to, but also the compressor is buried underneath the, the bench and I can't really be bothered to sort of crouch down and, and keep changing it as I'm, as I'm, as I'm working on a mold, so I sort of stick with what I, what I know. I know. It's kind of, uh, yeah, I, I perhaps sh should think a little bit more about that, but... Anywho, um, so... I hope that's kind of answered some some questions um, that you that you posed for the system. Um, today I'm hoping to to get the, the the black areas painted on this. I've checked this today, and although I was going to leave this till the end of the weekend to dry, I think it's probably hardened off enough now that I can I can spray the the remaining colours onto this. You'll see this model complete next week. I'll, I'll post it online so you'll get to see what um, what it looks like. Hopefully it'll, it'll turn out okay. And also you'll see how this works with the decals just on top of the metal finish. I don't think I'm going to seal this prior to putting the decals on. So if it works, you'll see the results. If it doesn't work and it goes horribly wrong, um, you'll see the results of that. One thing I should mention, I guess, about putting decals onto onto this surface, if you're not putting a, a clear coat on, on this and you are putting the decals just onto here, um, the tack between the adhesive under the decal and the surface of this can sometimes be quite fragile. Um, and if you're the sort of person who, like me, likes to mask along panel lines over decals to blend them in with, with oversprayed colours, um, red brown and black that kind of thing that sort of weathering um, I would if I were you avoid using masking tapes like Tamiya um, because it can pull the decal off ask me how I know <laughs> um, it's you know it can sometimes lift the decal completely off the model and that can be a real nightmare you can probably use um, post-it notes and that kind of thing and you'll be fine with that but um, please don't put decals onto a model like this uh, and then, you know, say to your friends, oh well, Spence said, you know, I can put them on to the surface of the model, yeah, absolutely fine, no problems at all. If you do that and it pulls the decals off, don't come running to me. Okay, so um, I think that pretty much covers everything. Thanks once again for watching um, the video, I was really pleased how many people watched it yesterday and um, and despite some slightly hokey editing um, in the middle of it that was caused by me having to rebuild the video um, I think it kind of got the point across so I'm, I'm really pleased you liked it really pleased how many people watched it and shared it around that's brilliant and um, and hopefully I'll I'll come up with something else next week along similar lines just have to think what that might be at the moment don't really know Anybody have any ideas of things they'd like to uh, to see me do? Please get in touch. Have a great weekend, and um, I'll see you again next week. Cheers, and until next time, take care and goodbye.